Hey boys and girls, uh, welcome back to Monroe and Associates and uh, Monroe Live. Um, as you can see, I'm underneath the, uh, the, the uh, Kia Niro. Um, this is the car that we're going to have until the end of the day. And so I just wanted to give you a little bit about what's looking on inside. Now, I didn't get a chance to drive this, but Corey tells me that it's the perfect old people's car. So um, I guess that's, that's that. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Um, uh, and we'll start at the front here and move, uh, move to the back. So the first thing we've got is this absolutely huge electric motor. Now, what's different about this vehicle than others that we've seen is that instead of having rear wheel drive and then maybe sometimes a small motor in the front, this one has a huge motor in the front. And the reason for that is because the, uh, the Niro is made for uh, transverse ice engine or um, an electric, or sorry, a hybrid electric vehicle, um, or this uh, PV, this is a, a battery um, uh, EV. So right now what we're looking at is something that's big, and the reason for that is what? Um, because it can be. I got something that with this much space, so I'm gonna fill it up. So I think that, um, I think that um, that's fine, I guess. I'm not really a big fan of uh, these all-in-one kind of a deals. It's like when you buy a, a knife, right? Uh, uh, I have a knife. So it has, uh, what has it got? Oh, one feature, it opens up quickly, and I got one blade, and that's all I need. <clears throat> if you get a knife that's that wide and that thick, and it has every tool under the planet, it, it doesn't really give you what you really want. I want this, and I want that right now, but I don't need um, you know, a special thing for, for descaling fish or something. This is trying to get everything into one big lump. So I will tell you though, there is one thing here that I've never seen before and I really like it. This is normally isolated separately, but in, in this case, they've hard mounted it to the electric motor, which means in essence that, um, that the motor shake and um, and the, what do you call it, shake here, the, the AC pump, um, this, is, uh, this is all mounted together now. So what happens here is that I don't, have, um, I don't have to have a separate isolation. Now, I did look up here and notice that there's only one hose that's uh, basically isolating it from the rest of the vehicle, but that might be good enough. Well, it's obviously good enough because it's working here right now. So I've never seen this before, ever. And uh, so for that, I'll, I'll give them a big star for innovation. If we look back here, we can see the half shafts. The half shafts are going to the wheels. And you can see that this has got an offset um, uh, transmission. It's not in line like some of the other ones that, uh, that I would normally like to uh, see that sort of thing. That, that, that's, kind of a, that's kind of a good deal. Um, this, is, uh, this is a car that's made for um, a timid driver. This is not made for like the super off-roading or anything like that. It's, uh, it's simple. Um, it's going to give you what you need to do to go to the grocery store, but um, there's not much here that you can write home about. Um, one thing that I did notice um, that, uh, that apparently does work is that when you go into small offset sorb, um, usually there's something here called a tusk to tear the wheel off and things like this one doesn't have um, a tusk it doesn't have shear bolts it doesn't have any of that stuff what it's got is a massive amount of um, uh, um, amount of uh, iron here in the um, in the longitudinals the rockers so what happens here is based on what I'm looking at You've got, you've got a longitudinal that comes in here, and you can see it going up and over. Sometimes those are called shotguns. And then you've got this one here, also a longitudinal. And uh, this is, um, is what we would normally call rockers. So this and this must be steering the wheel out of the direction of impact so it doesn't go into the cabin and, uh, and attack, the, uh, attack the, uh, the driver, if you like, in a bad way. So let's, um, let's move back a little bit. Whoop. And we can see right here that here's the battery box and you can see it's quite thin. 
Um, if, we, um, if we go back a little bit further, we can see these telltale lines. Now, um, there's a, there's a, um, a process um, that's called um, friction stir welding. And um, there was an airplane uh, a long time ago, and that's all he did was friction steer welding. It's a good, <clears throat> it's a good practice, and it has a telltale sign. So this is where the stylus goes in, right here. And what happens with friction steer welding is the stylus is spinning at a speed that will allow it to melt the aluminum. It pokes in, and then it doesn't really melt it. What it does is it turns it into the plastic stage. Not plastic like, uh, like the spatula you'd use at home. Plastic as in the true term for plastic, which means that it's a semi-solid. It's not really liquid, and it's not solid anymore. And that's what friction stir welding does. It goes in, it heats it up, and now, as you can see with my finger moving, the stylus moves along, and what it's doing is welding two things together. In this case, what we can see here, the lower, lower pan, and then above it, there's going to be some sort of a brace or a channel or something that's going to, uh, that's going to act as a separator. And you can see all along here, there's, a, there's quite a number of them. The thing that's kind of a surprise is they've used friction stir welding for that, but this is obviously uh, 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 TIG welded. So uh, tungsten and inert gas welded. So these, um, this is uh, using a filler stick and whatnot. I just wonder why they just didn't do both at the same time using the same process. Um, that's something I, I don't know what that is. Um, and uh, because of uh, <clears throat> this is not one of our cars, I'm not going to take it off, but I've never seen an access panel in the bottom of a battery pack. So if we look a little bit, maybe uh, uh, I'm going to make, uh, I'm gonna make uh, Eric dance around here a little bit. But if we look on this side of the uh, battery pack, we can see these black stripes here. Uh, that's a blackout tape or blackout something or other. Um, we, don't, we don't normally see that. I, I don't know why that's there. We think that it's some sort of a vinyl, but I'm, I'm not 100% not sure what it is that I'm looking at. And while we're looking up there, <laughs> I don't see these very often either. Um, these, are, uh, these are called... Um, rock flickers or, um, or um, stone Im impingement um, uh, barriers. And what happens is what I'm looking at is the front wheels throwing a rock back here and I, I don't want it to hit anything in my rear suspension. And uh, that, that kind of, um, it's kind of one of those things that you'd do in order to make that happen. So um, let's kind of like move around to the back here and we'll have a look. So Normally, what you see in front and rear suspensions, even if they're inexpensive, is that the, uh, uh, we, we try and get something called coil over shock. Some people, McPherson strut, there's lots of different terms for it, but this one doesn't have that. You can see that the spring is separate from the shock, and the reason for that is because there's not much room, almost no room, actually, to get this thing uh, this done. So. Um, you have a look at this uh, lower control arm, this thing right here, and you can see that it's pretty massive. It's, uh, it's stamped, and um, this type of suspension, it works, but not so many people use it. Um, it's not a, uh, I don't know, it's not, it's not something that we normally see um, um, in, in this type of a car. So if we have a look at the, um, um, if we have a look at, uh, just back here a little bit. Um, this is called a damper. Um, basically, it's a lump of material that you put in place where uh, you you've experienced something like vibrations. And um, in order to get rid of those vibrations, you put a damper on. So uh, it's kind of like uh, things didn't go exactly the way that the um, exactly the way that the engineer wanted. And so he's got a little a little something uh, something there. If we do one other thing, I forgot. Um, this is, uh, these little doodads right here are covering up a hole. So this would be my diamond hole. And on the opposite side, I've got a perfect round hole. And that would be my pinhole. That's for lining things up. 
so that, um, so that uh, when I put the battery in place, everything is going to stay in place. And one last thing, I think I forgot. Uh, here we are. You'll notice that they've used uh, some of the older fashioned uh, locating features that, that, uh, that people uh, used to use. As a matter of fact, um, this, this is kind of, uh, it's not my term, but, uh, but one of the guys said, this is an exceptionally well-designed 90s vehicle. Um, they, they, they took all the 90s ideas and uh, like ideas from the 90s and, and put them together and, and quite frankly, they did a nice job. So like I said, it's um, a really good um, 90s, uh, 90s electric car, but it's, it's, not, uh, it's not something that you'd expect to see uh, nowadays. Anyway, thanks very much for uh, watching uh, Monroe Live. Um, to all the folks who sent all the words of encouragement in my last uh, video, uh, thank you very much. Um, I, uh, I was really upset, and I still am, and I'm hoping that things get better. And by the way, there's another one on Google, or sorry, not Google, but um, on Bloomberg, and you can have a look there. We only had five minutes uh, to talk, but, uh, but it's, it's gone, uh, gotten a lot of traction. Anyway, thanks very much. Uh, if you can, keep uh, tipping those cashiers. Um, in Michigan, things are good, but the rest of the state's not so good, so give them, uh, you know, give them a little tip. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and we'll, uh, we'll be back to you soon with uh, maybe a new vehicle to have a look at. Bye now.